All right, ladies and gentlemen, got your watch list coming in October 16th, 2019, and the stock market rally will end if this happens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, got your watch list coming in October 16th, 2019, and today I'm going to talk about what could end this rally and also how we could play and set up coming into this earnings season and even tomorrow. So I'm going to do things a little differently here, and I'm going to actually go over the plays uh, more so in the beginning, but I got the basic keys for you guys, and it relates into why we're focusing on these plays and again interpreting where we are at with this middle deal and the markets aren't responding to headlines and we said this earlier as we would really expect so there is one key you need to look at is what's important what's going to move the market because other than that everything is coming into earnings and you could even see it with the low volume in the market and all that so let's talk about that i got some plays broken down we got earnings tomorrow as well too but i got, I got some plays plays i made potential ones but you guys know what you need to do drop your thumbs up on the video make sure you're subscribed and the most important thing you need to do post your watch list below let us know what you're looking at source the information earnings plays keep it positive respectful you guys know what to do but let's talk about the keys so this is going to relate to the plays but essentially watch the volume watch the news headlines we haven't been getting as many headlines today even the last two days, it's been relatively quiet. Uh, you know, a little update here or there in China. That's about it. The volume's been low, even on Columbus Day. And even now, we're even seeing with some of the policies. It, this is normal for the most part for how people set up for earnings. You know, this isn't too uncommon, especially after we're seeing all these companies report. So watch out for that. But next week, we're going to get a lot more bigger earnings and you're going to see bigger moves, but it's going to move like this, where it's going to be responses in the morning. Everything gets priced in relative to whatever just happened at earnings. And then it's going to stay there. Then it's going to price in and stay there until acted upon by equal or opposite force. But expect, if anything, more moves coming into next week with the earnings. But now here are the things. As far as news goes, what to watch, what's going to end the market rally or how you know it's going to happen. It's pretty simple. The only other headlines, it's going to be stuff related to trade. It's going to be stuff related to now the main headlines that we're seeing besides that is Brexit in Turkey. And it's hard to tell which one's meaningful. The market is not going to be responding to everything because of earnings season. So what do you do? You just keep it simple. Watch the currency. If the lira weakens or the pound weakens and the euro strengthens greatly, then you're going to know the news is more meaningful. Same thing even with the Chinese currency. And that's something we've been looking at today. You know, Mr. Wan, he knows how to communicate. So even if you're not able to see through what's happening or the market is all just fixated on these earnings, the currencies are going to tell their own story. So the dollar was important today too, but even then keep an eye out for China. You can see where it's at here, just where it's at on the day. If it starts weakening from here, regardless of what the market does, you know, we've seen this catch up. So this is going to tell us a lot about the trade deal. If anything happens in Europe and it's important, you'll see the pound decline. If it's bad, you see how it's rallying right here. That is good news for Brexit, if anything. And you could even see all of the headlines you've been getting, you know, you're getting a big move here. Watch the Euro as well too. Again, if there's a bad breakup, from the EU and the UK decides to leave, why would the euro go up and, and the pound go down? Because it would affect the economy there. And again, it would make their currency stronger, the euro, which isn't good. And then the pound would drastically weaken from a lot of lost privileges, access to markets, so on and so forth. So there's a little mini econ lesson on that one. But all in all, that's pretty much it. So keep your eyes out for that. And then that way, hopefully you'll be able to scan through the news a little bit more and even start setting up for plays and, and see kind of what's moving the market and not be so in intimidated or overly stimulated or underly stimulated by this market and how it's moving but that is pretty much it so let us get into the plays so we'll talk about the plays we made and then these potential plays i asked you guys earlier today i said i want to start and go over a lot of the plays here because again it's easy to knock all this stuff out and know what to look for now is going to be about really strategizing and setting up and, and looking for plays and seeing how things develop to find opportunities for earnings both before and after so you guys are even going to get a taste of that tomorrow after hours we're going to get Bank of America and Netflix earnings. But on Thursday, the day after they report, just like we saw today with JP Morgan, you know, they they killed it. Again, they they had a great earnings. It, was, it sucks. I called it on the watch list. That's what I said yesterday. Watch the continuation. And it moved so just weird that first 20 minutes. But then before you knew it, yeah, that, that thing was gone. So watch out for those opportunities as far as playing the Netflix earnings. Uh, I want to see how it moves tomorrow. The tomorrow's intraday activity is going to be good because I wasn't really too fond of any plays 
prior it had that pre-earnings move so i'll bring it up here so you guys could see it's already made that move here and we're going to see the earnings is pricing in 13 dollars. so really what we're waiting for is it for it to move tomorrow because if it moves up 13 dollars intraday somehow again the, the pre-earnings run up and then it reports the market makers may still be pricing that in most likely so that's a totally a 26 dollar move so if i want to play anything i would maybe look for an iron condor on there or if it does run up too high maybe we could even put a cap on it and, and sell a call spread or even on the reverse again it, it, even if it's whatever you think too if you think it's going to go up or down but at the end of the day if i was going to play anything on this one i am going to look towards tomorrow so again we'll be on stream first thing in the description we're live monday through friday 30 minutes before open you guys check that out it, we'll be on there and we'll see i'm sure a lot of people are going to ask about it so we'll see it but then we will stream their earnings after hours as well too so there's that but as far as plays we made today uh long-term portfolio we got snapchat we got Altria, we were, we were killing it, man, on the long term, man. 1.7% already on our on our savings account, day two. But again, I even had a little lesson. I think I might clip it there. We talked about why we made so much money on there. But we got the Snapchat. We got the Spotify shares. And you could see, you know, as far as how much, you know, 128 in Snap, that's the biggest position so far. Then we got a share of Spotify for 118. I'm definitely weighted towards growth here on the portfolio. So there's a little update on that. But now the other plays we made as well today too, I did buy Bank of America October 25th, 3150 call. This was just a straight up call, no spread, no anything. And we played it again in reference to their earnings was part of it. But the real reason why I played it was because there was news that uh, Warren Buffett was seeking regulators to allow him to buy more than a 10% stake. So I thought that was bullish. And coming into earnings, I figured we'd take a small risk there, 18 bucks on one of the contracts. And my hope is that I could turn it in. Here's that Amazon call where Amazon killed it from yesterday. Hopefully you guys got paid attention to that rotation. But there's that call. We got the 3150 at 18. You see it's down six bucks. So it's probably at $12 now. But this is what I was hoping for. I was hoping that it was gonna run up there. People even asked what I meant by I was hoping that it was going to run up, maybe get a lot of momentum and seeing depending on how the news picked it up or if they, if, if Warren Buffett actually got the approval, it'll probably take more time than that. Let this contract go up and then sell a call spread to hopefully get my money back and give me a free trade. And that's what I did last time. If you guys remember this play, we bought this play, a 27 put for $19. It went up to 40 cents at one point. And then I sold the same expiration, a 26 put, so a dollar lower. So if this, if I lost on this one, I sold the premium, but if I lost on this one, the other contract would be a dollar in the money. And I sold that for 21. So I literally made $2 to just hold both of these contracts. If Bank of America drops, even coming into the earnings tomorrow, I can make $100. And then if not, I'll walk away with making $2. So that's what I was hoping to do with that Bank of America. But even then that news, uh, I thought that was interesting. So that's what we did. And then also the other play we got today was a lift debit spread. So I got a November 1st, I got three of them. I got 347 calls and then I sold 348 calls. So the difference between each one of these is $1. So each contract you can make max $100. And you know, just like a credit spread, subtract what you paid for it your, your max gains like 84 cents but i bought all three of them for a net debit of 48 dollars. there was a rumor today and it had interesting movement and it kind of sucks because in retrospect looking even at uber uber kind of moved similarly but there was a rumor that icon was in talks with lyft so we don't know what that means uh, again we're assuming it meant in talks to take a stake but there was like large call activity on the weeklies on twitter or people started talking about it on twitter and then there's the reports that rumor of icon so it started going up and it held up, but we got those. I figured 46 bucks gives us time and it covers their earnings. And hopefully you guys are seeing how if you can leverage and stretch a play to cover earnings, it, it could definitely work in your favor. So those are the only plays we made today besides those other plays. Now, these are the potential plays I was looking for. I'll show you guys on the chart after when we get to these, but essentially McDonald credit spreads, October 18th, minus 1207, sell 120750 put, and then buy the 205. So this is a credit spread. By selling the 20750 put, you're pretty much saying it's gonna go up. And I'm looking for something around a $90, $100 credit. I think that's pretty good. The key is going to be looking at McDonald's and how it's really going to move around here because it's either gonna bounce. And again, it could break through 205, something around there, but it's been selling off. And again, think rotation as we've seen with Apple and that. Some of the other growth names have been doing a lot better so they might do good or again they could even be selling off they're selling off pretty decent honestly so but it's not uncommon for us to see this kind of before earnings and watch them do their thing so i like those i'm gonna keep an eye on those i i want to be able to sell a put play on something like that where again because we've it wouldn't be surprising where mcdonald's doesn't keep going down but just may stay in the same play there's that but then i also like these so we're still getting crushed on the hds i wouldn't say necessarily crushed i'm down on one of them 
I don't have HD up there, but I was down on one of them that was uh, on the Robinhood account. I had that October 18th one. It was a 230 and we were up on that uh, a good percentage, uh, you know, around here. And then it went up, made this move. So I'm down on that one. But then I was looking at these plays again because I think it has pr pretty much like another week or two in it. So even though this is October 18th, you could even look for October 25th or even November. But minus one, it's a credit spread on the call. So you're selling the calls, selling at 230, 250 and buying the 235, pretty much saying it's not going to go higher than 232, but you're collecting $180 in credit. So the max risk is like 70 bucks. So that pretty much saying, saying that by Friday or if you want to do next week, Home Depot will be lower than two, 234 or something like that. So not too bad. I like that one. And this was an interesting play. I saw again, just in relation with Bank of America, because we bought that one. And I was thinking, you know, if Bank of America re could really rally off of that news and it was good, again, even coming towards these highs and uh, again, seeing what JP Morgan did with earnings. I thought this one, because again, I would either want to buy a play, but if the plays were kind of expensive, we saw them get cheap. Selling premium could be a good idea. So this one, I was thinking 10, 30, 50 puts and buy 10, 30 puts as a credit spread. So pretty much you'd only be getting 28 cents and then you're risking 22 cents. So it's pretty much a straight one-to-one, -one, but that's why I'd be put it, willing to put down a little bit more. And again, too, I should add, these are all potential plays. So these are stuff I'm looking at and that I want to get into to understand option trade is extremely risky. You can lose all of that. Most of your financial investment, please consult with a financial advisor. It's educational purposes only. The cult loves you. Thank you for joining the cult. Be careful on that one. Again, it's a bigger collateral and a bigger risk since you're buying 10 of them. But I mean, it could be even good to supplement with one or two, but watch how the stock moves tomorrow with that Warren Buffett moves and then a BA credit spread. Uh, I was looking at these today, a caller put at the money, depending on where you think it's going to go either for this week again, or even next week, but I, at the monies are paying about 150. So it's a hundred dollar risk to make 150, but BA's in a, it's trading in an interesting spot here where again, it's, it's going to either stay within this range or it could cut pretty easily. Or, or again, if it does make a big breakout move and even for earnings, I'm kind of getting bearish on them, but we'll see. And then Roku credit calls, depending on where it opens tomorrow, because I think it could top around out top out around like 136 or like 140 but the credit is only like 30 or 40 cents so I, i'd wait for that and then you know if it does really really rip it fast in the morning or make a big move tomorrow some deep in the money calls might be good but you know who knows with this but that's why i keep your eye on that and then lastly uh for earnings or even before and you could do the weekly or the earnings i think it'd be decent but an iron condor on microsoft and now i want to even look to i might want to even set up a play to buy some of these coming into their earnings so that's that's what would be restrictive about this play and this play too it offers a net credit of 84 cents so if you guys remember i told you that it's in that the spread video the probability just inverse this so if you're getting 84 dollars, you know the max risk between these two contracts on all of them is a dollar max risk is a hundred dollars you're getting 84 credit, you know, divide how much credit by the collateral and inverse it. And then that ratio is pretty much letting you know what the, the probability is. So this is like $84 credit. You, pretty simply, it's about like a 20% probability or like a 16% probability because it's a pretty tight range, but it's an iron condor. Again, we have a video on that too. If you aren't familiar, it's pretty much selling two spreads. You're selling a credit spread on the call side and then a credit spread on the put side. So you're hoping that both sides expire worthless and that the stock stays within a range there. So October 25th or the weekly, but I know the October 25th had this price. This is what I'm basing this off of, but sell one 143 call, buy one 144, and then sell the 141 put and then buy a 140 put. So pretty much you're saying, and you're getting 84 credit. So pretty much you're saying it's not going to go above 143.84 and you think it'll stay above uh, 140, like 16. That would be your break even on both sides. So that one's a good high credit, lower risk player, again, lower probability. But again, that, uh, you know, that big of a credit ratio, 80% credit ratio on the 20%. It's not too bad, but as you guys remember, you know, most of these are around that 30%. So we'll see, but those are the plays. So tell me know what you guys think about this style. If you like these potential plays again, these are just plays I looked at. I saw them today. I was interested. I didn't act on them. So I, I thought I'd share them with you guys. I asked on stream and people said, put them up there. So let me know, you know, I come across a lot of these. We could even document them. You could paper trade them, do it, do whatever. I mean, I didn't get into these. So you guys are seeing in two, you know, you're seeing even kind of some of the effects We've been taking a beating here on some of the spreads and someone even asked, you know, let's bring it back, man. If we're going to brag about the, the upward moments, we got to brag about the downward side too. You know, we're getting a big pullback and it's pretty much bringing, bringing us back to the same place when we were just buying naked calls, even if we're doing spreads and we have to answer the question why and analyze that. It's because we're selling in the money contracts a lot of these times, these high credit, lower expirations, they run that risk. And then we're getting beat up three, four rollovers that are that are working really heavily against us. And when the underlyings move as much as they did, 
it becomes harder to get out of here. But key to go through is see what we have working for us. See, I might even want to cut Disney tomorrow. That one's been a nightmare for us. Get a hold and see how much collateral you have remaining. You know, out of this 750, you know, how much is there available cash? I've used all my cash. So I have to pretty much realistically see the gaps between all these. That's what I'm going to be able to lose. And we'll see what it could come back to see where our cash is or we have to just have a plan to roll over and continue to fight through these. What that means is deciding, you know, we're gonna have to take some L's on them and then know which ones we're gonna be able to roll over on and have the balance available to do so. There's that, but then also we'll see if this goes a, a decent way, this Amazon, and then again, so this was a play from yesterday, one to watch, but if this one could work out, but again, that strategy's, uh, you know, we're not gonna base it on hope. The key is we need to see what we have with the balance and let the market come to us and let the opportunities be there, but not really panic too much. Again, though, because the key is, I know the risk I was taking with these, but I think the problem was I was just too heavily weighted or realistically rolling over too soon. We could have let off the gas on some of the rollovers. That probably would have been the best, I would say. Besides the fact the plays, you know, that we were wrong timing by by a, a mile on some of them or got them just at the at the worst point of volatility and were just weighted too heavily on one side or the gaps were too small. So wanted to give an update on that so you guys could see. I know some of you guys have been doing this, but I want you guys to be smart and ready to go. Figure this situation out now, whatever it is you're in, and then so you could plan ahead for all these plays. And again, this week is not even exciting. So what we're coming here with earnings, again, let me know if you guys like this style. We could cover a lot of them, but post your plays and share them too and take some personal responsibility and get out there post plays and try to understand these and not only will you be able to contribute you're going to be benefit yourself you're going to be able to know what you're doing and that's the key you know don't trade on stuff you don't understand go paper trade so you could get a better idea of how it's working but those are the plays as far as what to watch tomorrow I mean, I could run through these basically, but watch Amazon. I'm watching for that rotation. We talked about that a lot. Watch Bank of America, Netflix. Again, JP Morgan, I think a highlight of there is that when they've had good earnings, they, they could run up a lot and they're just leading the banking sector here. And we're going to get a few more banks. So watch out for them, them and financials. Again, McDonald's, I like it on the low side. Uh, and then Baba, this one caught my attention just because uh, the Asian stocks and how we're seeing the Chinese one, watch them. It's making big moves and see if there's any divergences between them, JD, all that. I don't know. I've worked day on there, but also watch Microsoft. I think they're a great play. Again, we have the iron condor that I said you could watch. Watch the video, that play we talked about yesterday. Could be kicking myself, but at least hopefully you guys go back. You can see how we talked about it, that 192.50. Oh, the 60 cent, it's like I told you guys yesterday, a thousand percent of right there. They're going for 60 cents. They were sold at 732 today. Closed at 50 cents there, $5. So every 60 bucks to 500, not too bad. But watch them. You could even watch Intel as well and any of the other chip makers if they start moving. Watch Lyft. Again, Boeing's at a great spot. Facebook too. That one had a crazy, you know, 3% move today. You, you had 1,000% gainers, even off the mornings. We'll see if we get the same atmosphere as that tomorrow. And if the volume and, and any news is there, it'll help us a lot. But even just watching coming into earnings, you know, this is a typical earnings type of move, especially. So start getting used to this now so you could take advantage of it here in the next few weeks. And then lastly, Home Depot. And then watch actually UNP. I think they have earnings on Friday. Uh, watch transports. We still have that open play on FedEx or on UPS, but watch UPS and FedEx. I think those are important. Those are at good levels and can make moves. Watch beyond on the lows and then Home Depot. And that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you post your watch list. Make sure you like your video. Stay hydrated, healthy. Bring a friend to Colte. Make sure you're in the game, baby. Got another week after that, after that, after that. This is where traders are made, baby. And guess what? The real trader don't quit, man. You're going to quit. That means you just go back to paper trading. If you feel worried about that, Go to church, get a pit bull, go study, go do anything, or just control your budget. That's usually what happens, man, if that's it. The key is to make sure you got enough money to work with. Budget and plan, get a contingency plan, but also at the same time, stay in the game. And don't let the, the rockiness rock you from your, your, your seat or position. Just stay focused on what you need to do. I tell you to stay hydrated. I think I did, baby, but I will see you guys in the morning. Let's go. <laughs>